Hey friends, I'm Otis Gibbs, and this is my buddy Barry Walsh. He's going to talk about getting to play with some of the greatest musicians of all time. Andy Buttry was a hero of mine. I mean, he he played on Ronstadt stuff, on Neil Young stuff, on you know so many great country records, and he had Ed Dillon. He played on uh, Lay Lady Lay, you know, and he told me these stories. I mean, I, I would sit on the bus, and Kenny Buttry was telling me the story of how he how he ended up playing the cowbell on Lay Lady Lay, you know. Well, he, he couldn't figure out what to do. And, and I think he said, Dylan at one point said, try that cowbell over there. And so he picked up a cowbell and that became the track, you know. Um, and he told me about playing uh, on Rainy Day Women, number 12 and 35. Uh, he said, and that was like, they, Dylan wanted this kind of Salvation Army sound, you know. So Kenny just picked up a bass drum and turned it on its side and just started playing the bass drum like he was in a marching band. And that's the track, you know, that's what's on there. You know, that's on the intro. Boom, 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 boom. You know, that's the intro to that song. <laughs> well, what's it feel like to be on a bus with him? Oh, man. Yeah, just a thrill. Total legend, you know, from one young musician to, to another, you know, to a legend. You know, but in those days I was playing, I got to be around a lot of those guys. Reggie, Henry Sterlecki, who also played on the Dylan stuff. Wayne Moss, you know, I was lucky enough, and Buddy Harmon, you know. The first tour in Europe I ever did was with a band called the Nashville Super Pickers, and it was Buddy, Buddy Harmon, Henry Strelecki, Bucky Barrett, and me. It was just the four of us, and I was the singer in that band. I was, you know, the main singer. And we did Wembley, we did, we did the Mervyn Kahn tours and this and that. And, uh, I mean, I was, I think I was 29 years old at the time. I was like, this isn't happening, you know. <laughs> And so I, I soaked up all those stories from those guys, the, the story of Henry uh, and, and playing on the Dylan stuff. And when you hear Rainy Day Women number 12 and 35, uh, you hear like you hear Dylan sing in the chorus, you know, everybody must get stoned. And you can hear Henry and I, I can hear his voice in the background going, yeah, all right. You know, and there he is, you know, <laughs> in the background. They're really the reason that I got into I got into music in the first place. When I moved here, I was 16 years old when I moved to Nashville. I moved from New York and, and I lost all my friends. I was in the middle of high school. I was pissed off at my parents, pissed off at the world. I wound up at Hillwood High School for a year and Hillsboro the year after that. And I was bouncing around three different high schools. But the thing that saved me was in it, I moved here in 69 and that's the year Nashville Skyline came out. That's the year the birds you know, did sweet, Sweethearts of the Rodeo and, and the Grateful Dead came out with American Beauty and Working Man's Dead, both in 69. And those four things turned my head around to what the possibilities were. I thought, wow, there's something, something about Nashville, you know, that I'm not seeing at first, but there, I know there's something here, you know, and there was. <laughs>